so welcome. Uh, today's webinar is going to be about who are the best pay per lead clients and how to, delete, how to deliver lead volume to them. So we're gonna look at some of the best industries, what's working for us, what's working for our students, and how that looks, how to have conversations with the clients, how to find out what criteria they want, all that kind of stuff, okay? It's gonna give you a little bit more information if you're looking to start on the pay per lead model. Okay, so first thing is, um, you know, make sure that you kind of switch off all your devices. I know I spoke about this last time, but you've, you've, you've turned up for this webinar. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are, are fully committed to it. You've, you, you know, it's only going to take 45 minutes or something like that, but just turn off your mobile phones and concentrate because there's going to be some good stuff here. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, for those of you who are new, um, and haven't seen any of my content or whatever, but my name's Dan Wardrope. I um, have three pay per lead agencies, one in the UK, one in Canada, one in Asia. Um, and I have an education product where we teach people how to, um, you know, generate leads and in the pay per lead model and how to make that work. Okay. So um, I'm not just someone that's educating. I'm down in the trenches. I'm running leads and we're doing um, some serious volume worldwide. Um, and we have been doing for some, some time. So the reason I created this education course is so I could, um, you know, use it as a, a perfect storm, I guess. I can put what I'm learning um, in my agencies into my course and what um, people need help with in my course, I put back into my agency. So it's a perfect storm environment. Um, some of you might have heard my story, but I've had a, a long and prolific uh, history of, of failures. Um, uh, and I only started having some success probably about four or five years ago when I moved to paid traffic. Um, I was a chemical engineer. I was a failed property tycoon. I sold pot plants in pub car parks and I typed make money into Google in 2009. Um, and that was when the kind of things changed forever, but it took a long time. I, I failed as an affiliate marketer. I had an SEO agency. My partner um, pretty much stole from me. You've heard all of these sub stories before from many people. And I think when you're starting out and you, you're a little bit desperate, you skip um, certain things like partnership agreements and shareholder agreements and formalizing things. And if you do that, you're going to struggle. So um, please, if you are partnering with someone, make sure you go through the formal um, the formal routes. If you are, for example, um, already in an agreement with someone, then make sure you get so something in place because it always ends in tears when there's money involved. Um, so make sure you have things sorted. Um, I moved into paid traffic in 2015 and I started selling leads um, around 2016 and uh, my life was changed forever. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, so the best industries that, high, that have five-figure ad budgets um, to spend per week, um, we're going to talk about them and how it works. Um, we're going to have uh, conversations to be had with your clients before you start. We're going to talk about the funnels to start testing with, i.e. lead ads, add to quiz to thank you page, as to, add to quiz to results to thank you page, add to advertorial to landing page to thank you page. Um, and we're also going to talk about a feedback loop, what you want and need from your client, okay, when you get started. Um, we spoke a little bit about this last week, uh, last month, sorry, when I held a webinar for those of you who remember. But if you have experience, there's no point you trying to find new industries, okay? If you've got experience, you're running ads for people that... Um, you know, and you're already getting cost per leads and you already know the industry, then you can easily convert these people from retainer contracts to pay per lead. Or if it's not these people, then it can be other competitors in the same industry. And this is what happened with one of our, our students. Um, he, this was a while back, I think it was March this year, but he said he's got his first client committed to 100 leads at $350 each. It's in the personal injury space, but that is a 35K per week order from personal injury. So he was already, you know, fairly experienced and he was running on a retainer basis and things were going well for him. But once he switched the model, um, you can see the kind of income that he was making. So it is uh, considerable. Um, so if you don't have experience, uh, 
then we have a list of uh, industries that we work in, that we want to work in, that our students are working in. All right, so as promised, here are some examples of industries we've worked in, we're currently operating in, and what we and what we want to break into. So um, there's quite a few here. I just wanted to chat through them briefly. You guys have obviously got this document now yourself, but. Um, life insurance, this is obviously a vast market. There's lots of potential niches within niches. Um, if you haven't checked out my video on YouTube, um, we'll get someone, we'll get my team to, to um, type it in the chat box, but it's the micro niche um, YouTube video, Ari or Alan or Polly, if you're listening, can you chuck it into the chat group? Um, so one of my favorite lead generation websites, which is not ours, is tom.co.uk. Um, and this deals with a very broad niche but focuses on men leading, um, needing life insurance is still obviously massive. So it's a big niche and they've tried to niche down, which is when I talk about a niche within a niche. It's a brilliant website and it's uh, well worth looking at if you're looking to get into lead generation. But these guys are, you know, I don't, I've got no idea who the company is, but um, they're essentially pay per lead, a pay per lead company that's just taken it to the next level. Okay, it's very professional. Um, income pr protection insurance, again, a market full of niche, uh, a niche within a niche potential. So the hook is that people don't know that for a few pennies a month, they can get paid a salary when they're off sick. And this mainly benefits like people like laborers and blue collar industry workers. So when you think about it, you can start writing, you can create a, a site or whatever and, and, and start pointing ads targeting these type of people massive opportunities. Compensation niches, also known as the claims industry. So the claims industry pretty much paid for my house and my underground wine cellar in one fell, fell swoop within two years. Um, and there are multiple B2C and B2B niches within this space. So you could be looking at personal injury, mis-selling of mortgages, um, mis-selling of credit cards. The, the list goes on and on and on. There's literally hundreds of these, um, you know, it's, it's well worth looking into. Mortgages, obviously a huge market. The trick is to land a client in the mortgage industry who needs at least 200 leads a week and has a call center, okay? Um, secured loans, again, the same, but some of the leads are worth far more, especially when people are looking to consolidate some form of debt with, it, um, with the equity in their home. So they're struggling with uh, their debts, but they can um, take money out of their home cheaply and pay off all of their all of their debts. Those leads are worth a lot of money. Equity release. The baby boomers are, um, you know, they're getting to seventy plus now. They don't want to leave their home, but they want to enjoy their lifestyle. They've got a lot of equity. They're property rich, but they're not cash rich. So they want to enjoy their retirement and equity release is a massive industry, which is really good. And we have students doing very well. Um, in this industry with long copy ads to a quiz. Broadband, um, we've, we've worked with uh, broadband providers. So usually the second and third tier type broadband services are great. You'll never get to work with the really big ones, um, but um, they've got some great hooks and it's, it's sometimes is a race to the bottom, but they, they'll take unlimited lead volume. Private medical insurance, um, in the UK mainly, but people are fed up with you know the NHS cuts and long waiting times. And there's really great solutions available for business owners um, as well. Like for me, for example, I didn't realize I could write off um, my um, private medical insurance via my business costs. So that's a great hook there as well. Grants, um, so B2B. Uh, so businesses aren't aware they can get grants and money back for things like R&D. Um, and this is what Gavin, our operations manager at Flex Dig Dig Digital calls a money for jam industry. So business owners have nothing to lose if they qualify. So they didn't know that this money was due to them. It's easy to get leads in these spaces. Again, funeral insurance, massive industry, although you can't run Facebook ads on them um, at the moment. It's called final expense in America. Again, the baby boomers are looking to prepay for their funerals. Um, all of the big kind of shopping um, uh, banks and uh, supermarket chains are piling in on funeral insurance. So when you're seeing people um, and big companies like this investing in funeral insurance, you know that it's a big lead gen and it's here to stay. Real estate, pension transfer. So 
Uh, back to real estate, one of our students was making 40K a month from our free training alone on pay per lead selling high end developments. Okay, this was a hybrid deal, so the client paid for the ad spend and then another a fee was paid on top for any sales commissions. Pension transfer, again, um, people are unhappy with their pension performance and need a better return. Car finance, car sales, we've worked with sell your car fast type companies and they have an insatiable appetite for leads because it's a high volume, low, lower margin game and there's loads of people out there looking to sell their cars cheaply and quickly. University placements for foreign or local students, colleges in the States, um, for example, charge really high fees and make a lot of money. Therefore, there's, they've got huge budgets to throw at lead gen. Debt consolidation, this is one of our biggest niches. We're running traffic in multiple countries. It's recession proof and has a brilliant cost per lead. The key here is quality. Um, tax rebates for businesses and individuals. So um, some companies have huge tax bills to pay, but they don't realize that they can use this tax money to invest in other places or reduce how much they give away to, you know, the tax departments in that particular country. So there's lots of B, B2B type um, leads available in this space. People don't like paying taxes and they're worth a hundred dollars each plus these leads. But, you know, I've, I've talked more down here, but all of these industries are great for the PPL model but it's just scratching the surface. We've got students that have, are killing it with home decorations, kitchens, spa installations, and more. Um, we have students doing well in the timeshare industry, um, people wanting to get out of their timeshare property for free. Um, it's just vast, vast um, opportunities out here and there's no worry about saturation. The only thing I would say is that if you're looking to enter a new industry, there needs to be a good hook, okay? There has to be a good hook. If you haven't got a good hook, it's hard to get leads. All right. Okay. I'm going to try to go. You, you guys can read the rest of this down here, but to summarize, there are lots of great industries, um, but be original. Okay. Try and figure stuff out yourself. All right, here we go. So I just shared with you um, some, uh, some niches that we're working in. I want to get into uh, the opportunities of us, right? So we spoke in last month's webinar about um, how to land these clients and we use kind of direct mail, LinkedIn, and we did a, a webinar on that last, uh, last month. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, please go and check it out. This is high quality stuff and it will, it will set you off on your paper lead journey. So there's the bit.ly link. I called it last week's webinar, last week webinar, last week webby, but it was actually last month. So after you have landed these clients, which most of you guys know how to do because you watched that webinar last week, what do you want to be talking about? All right, because it's embarrassing when you, you've landed a client and you don't know, how, you know what they're after and they're expecting you to know what you're talking about, right? So the first thing to discuss is, is payment, payment terms. So we get paid up front every month, sorry, every week. And you know, that happens on a weekly basis, okay? And you need to be strict, except in some instances where you'll land a really, really big company and they'll, they'll tend to do it a week in arrears, okay? And you sometimes have to be cool with that, okay? But I'd recommend starting a little bit smaller before you start, you know, when you've got your criteria and your quality and everything dialed in, okay? Um, so the criteria that they need, how many leads do they want? What type of leads do they want? Do they want name, email address, and phone number? Or if you're running ads in car finance, do they need, you know, their amount they want to borrow, their address, their age, their gender, um, you know, all of this stuff, these companies are very clear on what they want in order to be, to be able to convert that lead. So you need to be asking those questions. Okay, the other thing is that they're gonna wanna talk to you about is API integration. So if you're generating leads from your funnels, which we're gonna talk about in a little, a little bit, how are you gonna get the leads to their system? And the kind of people that say, just send it to us via email, Okay, just do it via email, that's fine. You know, it's okay to kind of start with people like this, but usually we usually run a mile now because people that are working leads via email, 
don't know how to close leads. That's just a well-known fact now for us. They don't know how to follow up. They take over an hour, maybe even up to a day to call these leads because they're busy doing other stuff in their inbox. It's just a horrific way to run a company, okay? They need to have automations in place. They need to have text message marketing. They should be doing email marketing. They should be dialing these leads multiple times per day. They should have text messages going out, the whole lot, okay? If they're a big company and they want to order volume, they're going to have all this stuff set up, okay? So expect to be able to have an integration with them, um, you know, when you, when you're, when you've agreed and you're ready to get started. Okay. So what contact rates are they looking for? This is all really good Intel. Make sure you write this down. Okay. So contact rates for, for leads can vary between 40% all the way up to 80 or 90%. Okay. And most people don't know this, like, let's say you're delivering a thousand leads a week. Some companies are happy to get in contact pay for a thousand, but only get in contact with 500 of them at a 50% contact rate. Okay. This is just the way things go. So find out what contact rates they need to make it work. And what is their contact strategy? Are they good at what they, what they are doing? I just discussed email follow-up, text message marketing, dialers, ask these questions because you'll be able to tell if they're a serious company and now, and, and you know, it will impress them as well if you have these questions to ask. Okay. What is the lead to close ratio? What does quality look like to them? So if they buy a hundred leads, how many do they expect to close out of that? They're usually going to tell you about 25% more than what they actually need. So if they're ordering a hundred leads, they're going to say, we just need to close 10 of them and we're happy. That usually means they're going to be able to um, survive and do pretty well off seven or eight closes. Okay. Because they're, they're clearly going to ask for a, expect a higher quality than what you're probably going to deliver them. What is the scrub criteria and projected scrub rate? So not many people know as well that around 10% of leads are usually scrubbed. So you have to allow for that in your cost per lead. But a scrub criteria is usually a hoax number, i.e. people that um, have picked up the phone and like, I didn't put my details in here. That's someone else has just done this. It's not me. Okay. A duplicate, obviously you get duplicate leads. Sometimes you've got to scrub one of the duplicates. Um, and, and wrong numbers, okay? So if, it's some, if the company, the client just dials a number and it's a deadline, then you, they don't pay for that. Okay, but you have to run through that, otherwise you can get in trouble later. Okay, what type of weekly reports are you going to get? All right, because another way to impress clients is if you, um, you say to them, okay, we want this to work for you guys, but we're going to be able to need to get feedback, a good feedback loop from you. We're gonna to need to know the age of the people that are converting. We're gonna to need to know if there's a trend in the gender. We need to know if there's a trend in um, location. Okay, so we can take all of the leads that we're sending you, we can get a feedback loop, and we can then figure out with our targeting how to get better quality leads, and they're gonna love this type of stuff. So if they're not giving you weekly reports, then you need to just think, you know, are these guys really good? Okay, so that's another interesting one. And the last one is when you get it a bit better, and we do this now all the time, is ability to pass the source into their CRM. So if you're running tra multiple traffic sources, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Google Ads, Search, um, GDN, all of these different sources, will have different quality associated with them. So if you're gen generating volume from different traffic sources, then you might find that actually Facebook ads suck, but your best quality leads are coming from Yahoo Gemini or Taboola or something like that, okay? Um, I don't wanna get too carried away with that because it's a little bit more advanced, but this is how you get really, 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 really good is when you can find stories in the data, not only in demographics, but also in where the traffic's coming from and even down to the ad, okay? I hope that makes sense. So now, we, now we've spoken about, um, you know, what, how to have conversations with the clients, okay? And now you've sorted out your criteria, you, you've agreed scrub rates, you know that you're gonna get weekly reports, you know that you're gonna try and improve quality for them and everything's off to a bang. But how do you get started, okay? Um, this is the next thing that we go through. And 
there's there's a way to get started with the least possible resistance okay um and usually these type of leads don't work but sometimes they do and it's a really good way to gauge how good your campaigns are going to work all right um sorry i've just realized i was getting a little bit ahead of myself here before you start delivering leads you want to reverse engineer ad copy okay so you've agreed the client um, you've got all your criteria and everything done, but how, what about ad copy? How do you write great ads? And, you know, I'm not trained in copywriting. Um, sometimes writing great copy takes years and years and years of practice. All right. You guys are starting out in the pay per lead industry like I was three or four years ago. How do you get quick wins? All right. You can, you can focus on all writing brilliant copy later on as you get better when you have a little bit more time, but, the best way to get started is by reverse engineering ad copy. All right. For these industries, because other people are advertising in these industries already do what they do and do it a little bit better. That's my motto. Okay. So the first place we go to is ad genius. I've, that's a spelling mistake there. Ad genius. Dot X, Y, Z. You can find what people are doing on Facebook in those industries. If you type in the keywords of that industry, Okay. The fa once you find the people that are advertising, note down their fan pages and then go to the Facebook transparency ad tool and um, type their um, fan page into that tool and it'll spit out all the ads they've got live at the moment. Take notes. Taboola Outbrain ads. Go on to, you know, over here in the UK, the Daily Mail, the Sun, the, the type of massive news publications that are advertising um, with native ads at the bottom of their ad articles. I'm sure you've seen them all before. They're usually advertising hearing aids and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm seeing people are typing in um, questions and comments here. I'm going to get to them at the end, by the way. Okay. So um, I forgot to mention that it's a bit frazzled today, but hopefully um, you can, we can go through all these comments at the end of the webinar. Um, so to bull on eight brain ads, have a look what people are doing there. Okay. They might be advertising your industry. You're going to get great ideas for ad copy, advertorial copy headlines, what's working there. Cause people are advertising on these platforms, know what they're doing. Google search, go in and type the name of, you know, if you're going after car finance, type that into Google and see what people are doing. All right. See what ad copy they're using. And then have a look at their landing pages and their quizzes and get ideas from there. And then what you can do after you've collated all this information is get a pen and paper old school style and start writing ads for a minimum of three hours. Okay. Maybe one hour at a time and just continue to write headlines, um, continue to come up with different angles into the market and, and work on short copy and long copy whatever it has to be based on the intel from all of the research that you've done. That way you don't have to be a world-class copywriter to make this work. Okay. You just have to take what other people are doing and put it into your, um, put it into your own campaigns. And trust me, this is a, a quick way to do it. All right. Um, there is a link to that niche, uh, niche list, Gary. Um, someone will post it in here for you. Um, Long copy is working well at the moment for us and our students. Okay, long copy to quiz. Okay, I was talking before. So once you have your, your kind of ad copy down and you've reversed engineered and you, you're good to go, you've landed the client, you know what criteria they're after. This is like quite controversial, but it's a great way to see if your hooks and your ad copy is working. And you might find that you can actually get quality out of lead ads. Okay. It's a, not a massive chance of it, it happening, but it's a great place to start. And we have students that are, are supplying leads, especially in the B2B market um, where lead ads are working, right? Okay. So it's a very quick way to test your ad copy and your hooks and your angles into this market. Very easy to set up fast. Um, and the worst thing that can happen is your client's going to say, yeah, the quality is not so great on these ones. And then you can say, well, we're testing, we're working on quality. We're going to look at some quizzes and stuff like that, but just bear with us. All right. But a great way to test a fast way to get some ads up. You don't even need landing pages, etc. The next funnel, once you've got your ad copy 
to test is add to quiz. Okay, I've got an ad here of me. Um, it's a long copy. Uh, it's a new ad that I've just written over the last couple of days. And it's not pointing to a quiz, but I'm just using it as an example. But if you're going after car finance, for example, and um, you've wrote a great long copy ad and you want to send traffic to a quiz, we were talking about this before, and the quiz is using micro commitments to find out all of these criteria that the client wants, the age, the gender, how much they want to borrow, whether they've got a new car or an old car, um, whether they've got a car to trade in, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Once you get good at that and you start getting results, what you can do is go from ad to quiz to results to thank you page. This is a funnel that we run um, very successfully. Okay, I hope I'm not getting too advanced here and you guys can follow. The first step is a long copy ad. The second, using car finance as an example, um, you can use quiz software, we use Leads Hook if you want an introduction to the owner of Leeds Hook as well, by the way, I can introduce you if you um, send an email to support at flexible.com, support at flexible.com. We'll sort you out with an intro there. Um, so what, what you can do is you can ask all of these questions, say for example, for car finance, ask how much they want to borrow over how many years, and you can use quiz software to spit out a calculation that says, the amount you borrow is $8,000 and we, your monthly payments are going to be roughly X, Y, Z based on 3.2% uh, interest rates, okay, which you can figure out from your client. You qualify basically and then you complete the next stage. And when you qualify, that is the uh, results page, the third step here, by the way, if you can see my mouse, all right. And once they have their results, they're obviously excited and they become a lead and they go to a thank you page. All right. So that's a little bit more advanced. Um, and obviously the lead quality is going to be better because they've been told that they qualify. The next one um, is what we've been running for a long time within our agency as well. It's when you get good is having an ad to an advertorial which is what you can see in the second step to a landing page, to a thank you page. Okay. So this is a little bit more advanced, but the qual this is how you get great quality out of Facebook because people will click on an ad. They'll hit the advertorial. If they're interested, they're going to consume that pre-sale content. The stuff that talks about the features and the benefits, the information that gets them excited about that product or service. I think this works really well in the claims industry. Okay, which I was talking about before. So people know that they might be able to get money back from their timeshare or they might be able to get money back from missold uh, a pension or missold whatever. Okay, but they need to know more before they trust you. So how does it work? Why are they due compensation? Um, how much are they expected to get back? How long is it going to take? What are the fees? All of that type of stuff is really good to go into an advertorial. Um, people that aren't interested click the back button, but people that are, are like now super excited. They're warmed up. They go to a landing page. These landing pages usually convert at about 40 to 50%. Um, and then they become a lead and, and people think that this is a long way, a long route to be getting a lead. But what we've seen on multiple occasions is that this route is actually a cheaper way to get leads than what most traditional advertisers are doing, which is add to landing page. Okay. It's very exciting stuff and it's a pretty, um, you know, advanced tactic that not many people know how to do properly. Okay. And, you know, these are the exact same strategies that I've used to grow my lead gen agency to multi seven figures within three different countries. Okay. It's, you know, it's, it's not complicated. Um, we, we've shown you last month how to get clients. We've shown you this month how to look for the right industries and I'm showing you some funnels on how to build them out at different stages of your lead gen journey. Okay. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's mapped out well for you here. I want you guys to take action and go and do this yourself. Okay. Um, you know, I've done well at a lead gen. Um, for those of you who haven't watched this, it was in last month's webinar as well. I highly recommend you go check it out. Um, 
this is a guy that joined us uh, probably about six months ago now, maybe a little bit more, and he's approaching six figures per month in profit. Okay. Um, and he started out in an industry that didn't work for him. And then he kept on um, testing and trialing and he sh showed resilience and he hit the jackpot. He's only one in, in one vertical. And now he's gone on to, you know, run leads in the UK and the USA and it's only one way for him. All right. It's highly worth watching this interview. All right. Lots of chats coming in. Um, the link to the previous webinar, Patrick, is uh, in this chat box. I think Ariana just posted as well. Okay. I, re I recommend you guys check this video out because it's me sitting there in my backyard talking to Gavin. Um, it's very informal and you're going to pick up a lot of golden nuggets. All right. So it's time for you to go and get started. All right. Choose a vertical and niche. Okay. We've spoken about that today. I gave you the, the, um, you know, the list for your information. Um, you should have that link now. Valuable stuff. Okay. Get a client last month's Webby. We showed you how to do that last month. Ask questions and build your lead gen funnels. I've shown you what questions to ask and I've told you what funnels that you can build, okay? This is not like 15 years ago where building a quiz was almost impossible. You can, you can build something in leads who can get started very quickly, all right? It's user friendly. We're at a special time in history, people, where people with zero technical skills like me, you've seen how I've tried to figure out this bloody webinar today, you, you know, it's it's big opportunities and you don't need all of these coding experiences to make it work anymore, which is uh, why I've done okay. Um, if you're not in the Paper Lead Ninjas group, um, join, okay? Type Paper Lead Ninjas into Facebook and shout out about your success as well as ask for help, okay? And if you need our help and you want to fast track your success, um, then you can book a call with me on my team on that link there. Okay. Um, it's an hourly link. Uh, Ari will post something into you, uh, I believe at the moment. Okay. But you know, in our course, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Do you see all those funnels that you were, that I was, sh I was showing you in this, uh, webinar. We, we give them to you as part of the, um, part of the package. So you don't have to think about, you know, reinventing and starting from, and from scratch and, you know, risking things not working. Okay. We've spent millions and millions on these funnels and they work like clockwork. All right. So you can fast track the process. You also get access. If you join us to myself on a weekly basis on one-on-one -on -one calls, you'll also get access to our closed mastermind group where we'll review all of your copy, all of your funnels. Um, we'll help you about cost per lead. We'll, We'll do the whole thing. And this is not just me. This is my team that are running ads on a daily basis in multiple verticals. Okay. You'll get help and one-on-one -on -one help the whole time. All right. But enough of that. Um, Q&A. Ask questions away, guys. The CMO of Bank America is a good friend, which is the reason I'm reluctant to approach her. But what is the best niche to approach her with a PPL offer? I've no idea what they do in house versus outsource. I mean, Bank of America is a massive, a massive bank. Um, I would pretty much say that they're not going to come on with someone like you, Paul, <laughs> no offense, even someone like me to run leads for them. They are highly regulated. It'd be an absolute nightmare. I think they have their own way of doing things. Um, I'd suggest going for someone that's maybe supplying leads for uh, mortgages or loans or something called secured loans for the Bank of America. I think you've got a better chance there. Sorry to burst your bubble, but it's, yeah, it just doesn't happen that way. Prove me wrong though. Eric saying it's helpful having this list. No problems, mate. Heather, ooh, no, I had it working for a second. People are still complaining about my tech skills. <laughs> Um, right. What payment press processor would you recommend? Eric has asked me. We don't use payment processors. We invoice weekly in advance and we ask for bank transfer. We don't mess with anything like that, credit cards or anything like that. Never have, never needed to. 
it's very simple using Xero to raise an invoice and get paid via bank transfer. Can we get some additional information on scrub criteria, Sean? Um, yeah, well, there's not too much really. You need to agree it with your um, client, but it is wrong numbers, hoax leads, i.e. people that have said that they didn't put their name and email into a form, um, and uh, wrong numbers. People, uh, when the client calls the number and it doesn't dial, like it's a dead tone, that's a wrong number. Usually about 10% of leads are scrubs, and you should um, work on that basis. I hope that helps. Is there a link for the niche list? Yes, Ari just posted it. Great stuff, Dan, thanks so much. Which channel would be better and best for B2B? Lead ads or LinkedIn? We don't do any um, traffic on LinkedIn, Andy. That's a good question. Um, and it's just because we haven't gone heavily into B2B. But LinkedIn is, uh, was set up by a guy called Reid Hoffman who was one of the early investors in Facebook. So you bet your bottom dollar that they're gonna have sooner or later epic ad platform with um, you know the same kind of algorithms that Facebook are using and it's going to be a great place to advertise it's just we haven't had to yet but um, we've always found Facebook works best to start with okay Darren what kind of support do you give on the course Dan coaching calls yeah Darren I think I spoke about that a little bit there um, we do weekly calls with me on Tuesdays uh, 11 a.m. and 9 p.m. UK time. Um, you get one-on-one -on -one time with me on those calls, uh, but it's a group group call environment. I in a round robin system. You get 15, 20 minutes, however long you need. Um, you also get our mastermind, which has got about um, it's about 230 people there now, all in different industries, um, yeah, and that includes my team, my account managers, my copywriters, my videographers, my sales team, everyone there to help you on your journey. Okay, it's, you know, if you want something reviewed, we'll do it for you. Um, Patrick's asked for links to the previous webinars. Um, I think you've got that link now. Um, Tom's saying, great webinar. Thank you. It's been a bit of a mess, to be honest with you, but, you know, we're learning. Um, are there problems with Facebook learning how to use a third party fan page, one that's different than your clients or your own company? Um, no. Okay, you can create, I mean, I don't know, no, no one knows exactly what's allowed and not allowed in Facebook, okay? I can't give you 100% advice as to, um, you know, whether or not you can use a third-party page, but we've been doing, we've been using a third-party page for about uh, four years now, and we've never had a fan, one of these fan pages shut down, ever. Okay, so um, that's just what we do and um, it works pretty well for us. Um, I can't demonstrate an example at the moment. I'm probably just gonna lose my um, entire screen again. Um, but there's plenty of people advertising through avatars and pen names and stuff on Facebook as I'm sure you've seen, it works. Darren just said he's, I've answered it, great. Adrian, awesome value, Dan, thanks so much for sharing. I missed the niches webinar but wondering if some niches work better than others. Patrick, we didn't do a niches webinar. Today was the niches webinar, okay? Read through that document I just sent, um, we went through earlier. It's got some good niches. The best niches are the ones where you get money for jam, as, I, as we said. So that is um, where people can get something for nothing, all right, a rebate or a tax rebate or R&D money or something like that. I hope that makes sense. Not being very tech, how do you suggest setting this all up? Outsource. Um, Heather, we use um, Unbounce, which is a drag and drop landing page builder. Okay, so that is where we build our funnels and we use Leadhook, which is a drag and drop decision tree builder as well. There is some tech stuff to integrate APIs, which I have absolutely zero knowledge on how to do. And you can outsource that pretty cheaply. I have a staff member, but you know, it's, it's not that hard, webhooks. Um, I'm sure I could figure it out. It's just, it's not in my headspace at the moment. Gary, how would you compare lead to a quiz compared to a chatbot quiz in terms of lead quality and click-through rates? Um, we haven't lot, run, run a lot of chatbot, chatbot quizzes. Um, leads hook, I think, um, has a better ability to segment and you can retarget, for example. So let's say, um, people are applying for car finance and they get to the end of the quiz, but they're not quite there yet. 
then we know that they're looking for, sorry, they're not quite ready to put their details in. We know that they're looking for a new car and they've got one to trade in and they want to borrow $43,000. Okay. You can create a retargeting campaign off the, um, you know, off the triggers within that lead took quiz and, and show them exact ads. All right. So there's a lot of functionality and segmentation that can be done with leads hook as opposed to a chat box quiz, which is a, a lot more linear from what I understand. Um, chat box quiz, you know, if you connect many chat or whatever, then you have their ability to um, uh, kind of send broadcasts and things like that as well, which is powerful. But we've always found that leads hook has done it for us. Um, we've, we've, we do a quarter of a million leads per year in leads hook. So it's worked well. Rolf, I came in very late. There will be a replay, mate. Heather, can someone brand new to this make it work? It's going to be harder. Um, Heather, depends on your background. It depends if you've got an, a foot in the door um, with someone that you can start with. Okay. It's going to be hard for you to do without joining someone like us. I'll be honest. Um, if you're brand new, but it, it can be done. That interview with Gavin, Gavin Thorne um, on YouTube, he had very little excuse me, excuse me. He had very little experience. Okay. Um, so it can be done. Is flexible.com the best place to get started with this? Do I book a session first? Just making sure I, I didn't miss a step. So, um, Matt, uh, there'll be a link that probably Ari has posted in here, which should, um, should help you. Okay. And you can book a strategy session with me or one of my, um, uh, team members to see if this is a good fit for you. All right. Step it. When you're starting out, how much would you spend per campaign? I know it depends on the niche, but a general idea. Well, you need to be spending a kind of at least, I think a couple of hundred dollars per day when you start on Facebook ads or another ad platform. Um, it all depends on the, yeah, the niche and the volume your client wants, but generally we don't do less than 500 bucks a day now within a niche. Darren, you mentioned about what, wanting in arrears. Have you been bitten on this before? Um, no, as far as getting paid. No, we haven't. Um, uh, there might've been one time where someone owes us money, but it's pretty rare to be honest with you. And I have a pretty good gut feel when I'm speaking to people. Um, whether or not there's someone that's trustworthy or, or isn't trustworthy. So um, be careful, but the risk is relatively low because rem remember, you're a lead gen. You can go into seven or eight different verticals if you wanted. These business owners only have one business. They need leads more than anything else. Okay, so they want to, they want to make it work. Um, Eric, you've said people are complaining. I haven't heard anyone complaining. Patrick, great webinar. Thanks. Uh, Step it said it all depends on the hook. What would be a good hook for mortgages? Um, we found that you speak if you speak to people, um, sp speak to pockets of people. Okay, uh, so you need to have a quiz which um, asks a lot of questions, and um, it's quite difficult to get through to get the quality up. But you also need to speak to pockets of people. Um, so it could be, you know, teachers or NHS workers or, or military people or whatever, okay? Because it's such a big industry, in order to win, you need to go a niche within a niche, if that makes sense. Step it again, do you use Google ads in certain niches? Do you focus on Facebook ads? Yes, we use Google search ads. Frank. How about luxury real estate rental industry? I have a new client who rent luxury houses all over the world. What would be the best way to do that? Um, straight to quiz or advertorial. Um, hmm. It's a tough one. I, pro I probably think you'd want to have some kind of a, you'd want to have some strong images within the ads of these luxury properties. And then um, some kind of a quiz, which figures out, you know, whether they're looking to move in soon, what their budget is, um, you know, whether they've got a deposit, all that kind of stuff, I think is the way I would do it. Matt, I've lost audio. I'll review the playback. Yeah, sorry, Matt. I think everyone else is fine. Gary's fantastic. Thanks. Hi from Perth and Aussie here. Really keen to jump in. Good stuff, Gary. I miss Australia. Um, 
Paul, what is the hook when prospecting for personal injury cases? Um, we're not actually in this industry, Paul. So um, you'll have to do some due diligence yourself. John, what about manufacturing service leads for local and national businesses as well as crowdfunding leads? Um, manufacturing services leads for local and national. Yeah, John, if there's a big enough hook, um, crowdfunding definitely. Um, but manufacturing, I'd have to know a little bit more. But, uh, you know, the, it never ceases to surprise me um, what good lead gender industries there are out there. Um, how tough competitive is this niche, sub-niche? What is the difference between do you want 100 free leads and don't do free trials? I don't know what you mean there, Paul. We don't do free leads, never give away free leads. Michael W, great stuff, Dan, thanks. No problems. Dan Berthiam, I'd like to talk to you about a concrete restoration and resurfacing business. I was on a retainer for a company that made millions and wanted what lead a lead would be worth for a company like this. They were getting quite a deal by paying me a thousand per month considering the millions they make. So this is an example of an industry where a pay per lead would work and you'd be able to get paid a lot per lead, okay? So if you have got Intel, Dan, on your cost per leads before and uh, what they converted at and you said they made millions, then you're definitely onto something because there will be companies that a lot of concrete restoration and resurfacing businesses are out there. So you're onto something there for sure. Um, Gary, um, real estate niche national, what, t what time to be, would that be too time intensive, assuming there would be a heap of different listings for different locations? Um, I'm not sure what you mean there, Gary, sorry. <clears throat> Adrian, what percent of your leads do you typically generate on Taboola compared to Facebook and Google and search? We're not running any Taboola at the moment, Adrian, we have done in the past. Um, that's kind of personal business stuff as well. I'm not really too keen on sharing that. Um, Brendan, your book is about B2C lead gen. Is there still a case in everything you're talking about today? No, we have multiple people in our group doing B2, B2B lead gen. It works well. Courier, thanks guys for the value. Where can we catch the replay? We'll post it um, in the Ninjas group and we'll post it on YouTube. Heather, if you're going into the real estate market, for example, do you run ads to sell the leads to, or are you getting those realtor clients another way? Um, we have a look at the, the uh, last month's webinar, Heather, that will tell you. All right. Um, I want to see if there's a different place where the Q and A is. Here we go. Um, can you provide a link to the lead gen agency website? It's tom.co.uk. Then our oh, concrete, we've already discussed that. I've, pl I've plenty of intel on that retirement that gave me a contact for their main competitor colleague. We'll be talking to them next week. Good stuff, Dan. That sounds interesting. Okay. All right, guys. Um, we've been going for pretty much an hour now. It was a bit of a mess. <laughs> from my perspective. Um, I hope you guys got value. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll be running another webinar next month. I'm leading, um, sorry, I've joined up with a guy called Nick who owns uh, Leads Hook, which I've discussed today. And we are definitely going to be able to show you some epic stuff. Um, uh, in a few weeks time, we'll announce the date soon. Um, I hope you enjoyed it all um, and no problems um, for everyone saying thank you here. I really do appreciate it. Um, oh, good stuff. Loved it. All right. Beautiful, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.